So what are we going to do? As you, when we write Fortune on newsletter, we go out and actually test these things in the field. And we said, people are busy now. Did you notice that? They have email and pagers and cell phones. They don't have much time. And most people say, just give me the bottom line. Just tell me the, the short version. If you watch music videos, how long does a scene last on music videos? A scene, like one second. It used to be two seconds, now the average is one second, and it flips, flips the scene. When people go to the internet and surf the internet, how long do they stay on a page? Not very long. In and out. So consider this. I walk up to your door. I'm wearing a little salesman hat. It says salesman right across the top. I knock on your door and I say this. I can give you a presentation. I give you a long presentation or I can give you a short presentation. Which one would you prefer? What would you say? If you call me on the telephone and say, tell me a little bit about your business, I, I say I can give you a long presentation or I can give you a short presentation. Which one would you prefer? What would you say? How many people here are picking up a trend? We did do, and we said, hey, it's not like it was back in the 1900s. Remember back in the 1900s? Like 1998, 1999? <laughs> People had a lot more time then, didn't they? That's it down for a presentation, but it isn't that way anymore. They're just answering their cell phone all day long. Roughly, it's what they do for a living. Well, <laughs> we decided, hey, what we need to do is get our whole presentation down to a minute so it fit in with people's time, and we went out and practiced. And for seven months, we did miserable. Well, all right, awful. We failed. We just couldn't do it. Till about seven months into it, we hit the key. The key is to find out what people need to know to make an intelligent decision. You know, whether it be a banker, whether it be a, a, a young mom with kids, whether it be a salesman, they all need to know the same things to make an intelligent decision whether to join or not. We found out, and this is the key, the big breakthrough, was all they need to know was the answer to three questions and they have all the facts they need to make an intelligent decision to join or not. How many people here think that's pretty neat? So after seven months, we cracked it. How many people here like to know what those three sentences are, or three questions? All right, let's go. These are the same three questions you would ask if you were looking at a business opportunity. Number one, what kind of business are you in? Is that a fair question? In other words, are you in agriculture, real estate? Are you in nutrition? Are you in car racing? Are you in sports medicine, insurance? What kind of business are you in? If you were looking for a business opportunity, would you join a business opportunity if you didn't know the type of business it was? No, we would always say no. What if you're looking at a business opportunity and you're kind of confused? You weren't really quite sure what kind of business it was. What would you say? No. A confused mind always says no. So the number one thing that everybody wanted to know is, what kind of business are you in? Number two, I think you'd ask this question if you're looking at a business opportunity is, how much money can I make? Sound like a fair question? Would you ask that if you're looking for a business opportunity? Certainly. And number three. Remember, all we have to do is answer these three questions and we're done. Question number three is this. What do I have to do to earn that money? What do I have to do to earn that money? In other words, do I have to have a Tupperware party on my front room? Do I have to be a one-eyed bungee jumping skydiver? Do I have to have a degree in sports medicine? Do I have to have a PhD in chemistry? Do I have to have a certain athletic ability? What do I have to do to earn that money? Would you ask that? Because most people are saying, well, uh, if what I have to do is going to be embarrassing me or something I can't do, I, you know, I just don't want to join. So all we have to do is answer three questions. Question number one is what? Number two? And number three, we answer those three questions, we are done. They have all the facts they need to make an intelligent decision to join or not to join. Pretty neat, huh? So you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe my presentation currently is a little bit longer than a minute. 
Is that possible? How many people here have a presentation that's longer than a minute? Whoa. Got here just in time again. Well, if you have a presentation that's longer than a minute, here's how you fix it. Two ways. Way number one, you could learn to talk really, really fast. <laughs> but since I'm from Texas, that's not going to happen here tonight. Number two, and the way that we're going to use today is you're going to have to take some stuff out. I mean, if you're going to get it down in a minute, you're just simply going to have to take some stuff out. So let's take a look at some stuff that you can take out of your current presentation. I would venture to say that most of the things you talk about in your current presentation could be saved later on for training. Because if they're not going to join, do they need to, need, need to know all that stuff? No. And if they are going to join, they can learn it later on in training. So the problem is most of us has misplaced a lot of our training material and stuck it in our presentation. So if we get it back where it belongs, remember, if they're not going to join, they don't need to know it. If they are going to join, they can learn it later in training. So let's take a look at some things we can take out of our current presentation to get our presentation down to one minute. Let's talk about the company. How many people here talk about your company during your presentation? I think it's a good idea, right? What are some of the things about your company, though, that you could take out and save later on for training? You could probably take out the name of the managing director. The name of the managing director's third cousins. The profit and loss statement for May 1992. The distributor count for August 1997. Every article ever written about your company, you don't have to read it to them now. You don't have to show them the picture in the catalog of a second floor window where the company may or may not be located. The square feet of the executive washroom with the wallet conference table is really wallet or composite wallet or fake wallet. All these things you could save later on for training. Because if they're not going to join, do they need to know any of that? And if they are going to join, they can memorize all the third cousin's name later on in training. Now, if we took all that stuff out of our presentation and all those slides out of our presentation, how many people here think that would give us a lot more time? Yeah. Say, wow, that'd make things go a lot easier. But we still need to take some more stuff out. So let's talk about the products. How many people here talk about your products or services? All right. If you talk about your products or services, what could you take out? Well, you could take out the name of that rock in China, that herb was grown underneath that was picked at midnight by leprechauns. <laughs> you could probably take out the difference between a T1 and T3 software switch and how, how many bots per square inch comes across the telephone line. You could probably take out the names of all the exotic ingredients in this particular uh, skincare product. You could take out the 650 testimonials that you insist on telling people right away. Or you could take out the 44-page research report from the University of Oxford. They normally read to them. Uh, the type of manufacturing equipment they have. You take all this stuff out and leave it later on for training. Because if they're not going to join, do they need to know that? No. If they are going to join, they can learn it later on in training. Now, isn't that refreshing? Would that save us a bunch of time? Absolutely. So now we've cleared up a whole bunch of time, but we can still do one more thing. Let's talk about the compensation plan. <laughs> How many people understood their company's compensation plan the first time you heard it? How many understand it now? <laughs> so we take all of that and put it later on in? Training. Because if they're not going to join, do they need to know that? And if they are going to join, they can learn it later on in? training where all the compensation plan scientists get together and discuss, you know, that percentage. Correct? Well, if we take all those things out, we can get our whole presentation down to a minute. And we can answer all three questions in a minute and be done. How many people here think that could change your business? Well, so all we have to do is answer three questions. Question number one is, Number two? Number three? And we're done. Answer all three questions in a minute. Would you like an example? All right? Now, I know there's people here from many, many different companies, so I'll do a very generic example first. Then after that, we'll do several examples for different type of industries so you can get some ideas for your business. Fair enough? 
but just for demonstration purposes only. I'll do a quick example of a one-minute presentation. I'll answer all three questions in 10 seconds, and then take a 50-second coffee break. <laughs> now, if I can do it in 10 seconds, you think you can do it in a whole minute? I think so. So I'm going to answer all three of your questions in 10 seconds, and you have all the facts you need to know to make an intelligent decision to say, yes, I'd like to join, no, I don't want to join, or maybe have a question or two. Fair enough? Okay. Dramatic pause. Whole works. Ten seconds. Everybody ready? We're in the gangster business. You can earn 100,000 pounds a year, and all you have to do is shoot people. What do you think? <laughs> That's about eight seconds. A little fast. Well, that answer what kind of business we're in? Yeah, did I mention how much money you can make? Did I uh, tell you what you had to do to earn that money? How many people here have enough facts to make an intelligent decision to say yes, <laughs> no, or maybe have a question or two? You see, you didn't have to come all the way down to an opportunity meeting, did you? You knew right away in advance, correct? You didn't have to come down to a three-hour opportunity meeting you know, on the history of being a gangster and how the gangster name came on board and how many people you have to shoot up to, you know, to go to the different levels and you didn't have to do that. You knew right away in 10 seconds if you wanted to join or not. It was done, right? So you can say yes, no, or maybe have a question or two. How many people would agree with me that you had all the facts you need? Right there. So you say, well, what do you do next? Well, listen to their answer. So I, let's say I give you this one minute presentation. At the end of the presentation, you said, Hmm. Yep. Sounds pretty good. The rest of my family does it. Why not me? <laughs> and you say, well, so how do I get started? And I says, well, get started. Well, every Tuesday night we have a little gangster meeting down at the Novotel here. Come on down. Pick up your gangster kit. You can meet some other people, see how many people they shot that week, you know, and uh, see how far ahead you're going to get. <laughs> or if you're in a hurry, I tell you what, let's just log online here at gangster.com and fill in your application. Or I'm really not sure, so let's call out my sponsor and he can kind of walk us through it so you can get started right away. Done. No big deal. Or you might have said no, right? So at the end of the presentation, you say, no, it's not for me. Here's what I would say. Hey, let's go to a movie. Let's go shopping. It's done. It's over with. You already knew, right? You're an adult. You made up your mind. I've done my obligation. I don't have to pest you forever, it's over with. How many people here find that pretty refreshing? This way your friends won't be walking on the other side of the street every time they see you. <laughs> or maybe you have a question or two. Well, I'll answer the question. So at the end of the presentation, well, I, well, sounds pretty good, but do I really have to shoot people? Or could I use a knife instead? <laughs> and I said, well, yep, yeah, you can use a knife. So, what do you think? And we're done. I wish I, you could see the shocked looks on your faces <laughs> at this moment. You're saying, whoa. I mean, I don't have to give a 20 minute, 30 minute, three hour presentation. I could give them the whole story in one minute and get on with it. That would be excellent. Be wonderful over the phone, wouldn't it? Wonderful to give a presentation like this to somebody before you meet them for a cup of coffee because now when they say yes, you know they're going to show up. Hmm. If, if, would you like this as a prospect if somebody told you the whole story before you went down to an opportunity meeting, before you invested your time? Think about it. We would love to receive a one-minute presentation. But you say, hey, that's okay for your business, Big Al. But what about my business? I'm not in the gangster business. So can I use it for my business? Would you like some examples of one-minute presentations for your particular type of businesses? All right? I'll give you some examples of what other people are using. And without mentioning company names, let's just mention some products or services. Fair enough? So what kind of products and services do we have represented here tonight? Nutrition. Nutrition, okay. Telecommunications. Telecommunications. Household, magnet therapy, pain relief, skin care, is what? Fuel economy, 
Electricity contracts. Like, a weight management. All right. Is what? Air purification. Wow. Home shopping. Insurance. All right. You know, I can't do it for any of these. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. All right. I'll do a couple quick examples. Don't take any notes. You won't miss a thing. Trust me. You won't miss a thing. I'll just give you a couple examples to give you a feel for it and of different industries. And then I'll give you the step-by-step -step exact word-for-word -word template. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks. Does that sound good? So sit back, relax. You're not going to miss a thing. I just want you to say, if I heard this, would I have enough information to make an intelligent decision to say yes, no, or ask a question or two? <coughs> Everybody relaxed? Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's pick uh, telecommunications. If you would like to earn an extra 100 pounds a month, you need to be able to do these three things. Number one, don't change. Continue recommending and promoting things just like you always have, like your favorite CDs or restaurants or places to go to movies. Just recommend and promote things like you always have, don't change. Number two, we're in the telecommunications business, which means we have really cheap long distance. We have cool pagers in multiple colors. And uh, we have an internet service that's uh, as fast as the competition, but a whole lot cheaper. And all you have to do is um, fill a little simple one-page form. And all your services work just the same as they always did, except when you get the bill in the mail, it's a lot smaller. And number three, all you have to do is get about 15 other people to fill out a simple one-page form so they can get a smaller bill in the mail for their services too. And then you earn an extra 100 pounds a month. Well, what do you think? Do we say what kind of business we're in? How much money you can make? What do you have to do to earn that money? How many people here have enough facts to make an intelligent decision to say yes, no, or have maybe a question or two? Pretty clear, isn't it? You don't need a whole opportunity meeting for this. If you'd like to earn an extra 500 pounds a month, you need to be able to do these three things. Number one, don't change. Continue recommending and promoting things just like you always have, like a babysitter or favorite things to do on weekends or uh, your favorite TV show. Recommend and promote things you like. Number two, we're in the skincare business. We have this wonderful moisturizer that makes your skin look 20 years younger in only 17 seconds a day. Costs less than a pound a day to use. And number three, all you have to do is pass out these little samples along with the video so people can try it themselves. And out of all the people that try it, you eventually accumulate about 30 people who want to make their skin look 20 years younger and keep it that way forever. And then you earn an extra 500 pounds a month. And the rest is up to you. Do we mention what kind of business we're in? How much money we can make? What do you have to do to earn that money? How many people here have enough facts to make an intelligent decision to say yes, no, or ask a question or two? Do one for nutrition. If you'd like to earn an extra 3,000 pounds a month, you need to be able to do these four things. Number one, picking up a trend here, aren't you? Don't change, right. Continue to recommend and promote things like you always have, like your uh, favorite type of automobile, favorite radio station, a favorite thing to do on weekends. Just recommend and promote things you, like you always have. Number two, we're in the nutrition business and have, we, we have this wonderful nutritional supplement that makes you wake up an hour early every morning feeling like a million bucks and help you fall asleep at night within seven minutes of your head hitting the pillow. Oh, and it also helps you lose two pounds a week and you never have to exercise again. <laughs> Number three. Sometime in your lifetime, you have to find four people who feel the same way about this business you do. They want to earn a full-time income or a really good part-time income. Now, you don't have to find all four people right away. Pace yourself. One a week, one a month, one a decade. But sometime in your lifetime, find four people who feel like you do. And number four.
between you and everybody that you talk to and everybody that they talk to and everybody they talk to forever and ever and ever you eventually accumulate about 300 people that use the vitamins regularly and then you're an extra 3,000 pounds a month and that's it the rest is up to you what do you think do we mention what kind of business we're in how much money you can make what do you have to do to earn that money how many people here have enough facts to make an intelligent decision to join or not well Judging from the looks in your faces, somewhere between pure shock. <laughs> how many people here think uh, now would be a good time to learn how to do it for our business? All right. Let's get to work. Let's write down the template. I'm going to give you the exact word-for-word -word template. As we mentioned earlier today, it's exactly what you say and what you do. So it starts off like this. You, we're only going to do the one for 100 pounds a month first. Because once we master this one, the other two are going to be real easy. So listed listed the template for 100 pounds a month. You start off by saying these words. If you want to earn an extra 100 pounds a month, comma, you need to do these three things. If you want to earn an extra 100 pounds a month, comma, you need to do these three things. Everybody got that? Number one, what would that be? Don't change. Write down the words don't change. And then rest your pen for a moment. Sit back and relax. Let's talk about this. You say, why are these presentations so powerful? Why are we able to understand everything right away? Why are they so efficient? Why do people get it? Well, let's take a look. We start off with don't change. Remember, we're not asking people to join network marketing. They already have. As we discussed earlier today, everybody does network marketing every day, but... Everybody recommends and promotes, don't they? Since everybody recommends and promotes, don't change. Just like if you read book on the book here, page 49, everybody does network marketing every day, just don't get paid for it. People say, wait a minute, if I don't have to change, do they feel better about this business? How do people feel about change? They hate it, don't they? So when we start off with don't change, is there a big difference? in their attitudes? Think about that caller. That caller starts off by calling you up and saying, well, I saw your brochure. Tell me a little bit about your business. Sales resistance, right? So you start off by saying, I can give you a complete presentation, but it would take an entire? When can you set aside a hole? Now what's happening to the caller? Is the caller more relaxed? They go, all right, can you give me a whole story? Don't have to listen to that long sales pitch. And then you start off your presentation by saying, number one, don't change. All right. They're almost comatose now, aren't they? <laughs> Isn't this a lot different than all that resistance and folded arms and grumpy faces? Yeah. So you start off with don't change. People hate change. Now, I used to give a presentation that goes something like this. Being highly trained graduates of Big Al Workshop, let's see if you can pick up the flaw in my earlier presentations. I'd say to the prospect something like this. In order for you to be successful in our business, the first thing you need to do is change. Yeah, you've got to change your attitude, change your belief, change how you think, change your family, change your friends, change what you do on weekends, change what you do on weeknights. So yeah, you've got to change. Oh, yeah, that sells. <laughs> Pretty easy to pick up the flaw, right? How many people here have ever heard a presentation where you're asking people to change? Yeah, I've been responsible for a few of them. But when you start off with don't change, Everything changes in the presentation. It's much more pleasant. Do you think that your aunt, your niece, your nephew, your co-worker could say, if I don't have to change, hey, excellent. All of a sudden there's a big belief they can do this business. Because people have a comfort zone. Do you have comfort zones here in England? Yeah, okay. Many of them, all right. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why do people have comfort zones? Yeah, because you're comfortable there. That's why they have comfort zones. Because when they leave their comfort zone, they are uncomfortable. See if you can pick up the flaw in this presentation. Well, Mr. Prospect, in order for you to become successful, the first thing you need to do is get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. 
Get an easel, stand up, give a meeting in your aunt's home while she rolls on the floor, holding her sides. Yeah, get rejected over the phone, meet strangers on the street. Yeah, get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Anybody pick up the flaw there? So if we can start off with don't change, all of a sudden the prospect is saying, hey, here's an opportunity that I can take advantage of. Number two, write down these words, describe your business. And let's talk about this. Remember, if you don't describe your business clearly, what's going to happen? They're always going to say no. A confused mind always says no. If they don't know what kind of business you're in, they're going to say no. So how are we going to describe our business? We only have one minute. We've got to be very efficient. We don't want to cheat the prospect. So we're going to have to, in one minute's time, tell them about our business so they understand it. Now, I was in... Scandinavia a couple months ago and I asked a young man uh, well tell me about your business describe your business and he said well we're in the global enhancement of building entrepreneurship through time freedom financial freedom by leveraging your efforts to get a generational type income or multiple streams of income through what is that how many people know what kind of business that is would you join of course not now, what he did was pick every cliche, buzzword he ever heard at a meeting, just stuck them all together, and that was his description. And he was wondering why nobody would join. And he said, well, that's, re that's pretty silly, somebody saying something like that. But how do you describe your business? I bet the way we describe our business could be greatly improved upon, making it more concise and more clear. So what I'm going to do is pick on some people here, hope you don't take it personally, and, and show you what you say about your business that makes it confusing and hard for people. And what I like to do is be an equal opportunity offender. I like to offend everybody here. <laughs> so, like I say, don't take it personal. For instance, somebody comes up and says, we're in the telecommunications business. Well, what does that mean to people? You build satellites, you're a phone repairman, they don't know, do they? So instead of saying we're in the telecommunications business, you might say something like this. Oh, we're in the telecommunications business, which means we have cheap long distance, cool multicolored pagers, and internet service that's the same price as everybody else's but a whole lot faster. Now people say, ah, I got it. We're in the skincare business. Well, what does that mean? You make yellow latex rubber gloves that protects people's hands? They don't know. Do you put little bandages, uh, plasters on children's knees? They don't know. You have to say we're in the skincare business, which means we have a wonderful moisturizer that makes your skin look 20 years younger and only 17 seconds a day. And a young man say, uh, we're in the legal services business. What does that mean? You bring donuts to lawyers or solicitors? We don't know. Now we're in legal services business, show people how to get affordable. In other words, you've got to describe it the way people get it. Oh, who haven't I offended here? Oh, yeah, nutrition people. Oh, yeah. We're in the health and wellness business. What does that mean? You change bedpans at local nursing homes? <laughs> You're a dietitian at a local hospital? We don't know. So you have to say we're in the health and wellness business, which means we have a wonderful food supplement that makes you feel like you're 16 years old all over again, but with better judgment, right? You've got to give them something they understand. Hmm. Who, who, who have I missed? Home shopping. Oh, yeah, I like this. Uh, or internet services and stuff. Or uh, People say, uh, what do you do for a living now? We're in the e-commerce business, which comes right before the f-commerce business, right? Nobody knows what this is. <laughs> no, we're in the e-commerce business, which means... We show people how to have their own shopping mall on the internet, making money 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while they're home in their pajamas. You don't even need a computer to do it. Now people go, oh, I know what that is. We all get the point, right? We need to describe our business the way so people get it. So let's do this. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I'd like you to write down a description of your business so people get it. And the best way to do it is maybe describe some of your products or services, you know, how they're used so people understand your business. So let's take 30 seconds. Let's write down a description of our business. Okay, how do we do? 
Let's move on. Step number three. We've got to tell people what they have to do to earn that money, right? How to earn that money. I'm going to give you some examples of how to explain it. Now, at this point in the prospect's career, do they really want to know every position in your company's compensation plan? No. Do they want to know every bonus on the bonus scale? All they want to know is just generally what do I have to do to earn that money? See if it's disgusting to me or tasteful to me or whatever. What do I have to do? It's going to be hard, ridiculous, easy. Let's find out. Let me give you a couple ways of explaining what do you have to do to earn that money. And then you can kind of pick and choose what's nice for your business. Let's say that you're in telecommunications. You might say, and all you have to do is help 15 people fill out the simple one-page form so they can get a smaller bill in the mail also. Might use that for electricity or gas, something like that too. If you're in nutrition, you might say, and all you have to do is find about oh, six or seven families that what? Yeah, like to uh, wake up in the morning, hour early, feeling like a million bucks, and have better nutrition for their kids. If you sold uh, water or air purification products, you might say, and all you have to do is every month loan two people an air purifier. So they could try it in their home. And then you're in 100 pounds a month because one out of two people probably buy and you're in 100 pounds, right? That'd be a way of explaining it. If you're in the skincare business, all you have to do is pass out these little samples and videos to you eventually accumulate about 10 people who want to make their skin look 17, year, 17 years younger and only 20 seconds a day, right? How else could you explain it? Maybe if you just sponsor one good distributor, you make 100 pounds. I don't know. So you know, let's say you're in the... Um, Telecommunications business saying all you'd have to do is sometime during the month help one other person get started so they can earn a part time income and then you'd earn a hundred pounds a month. Or maybe you could do this. You might say, and all you have to do is pass out these little audio tapes, pass out ten tapes a week for the next four weeks, and then you earn an extra hundred pounds a month. Because you know what the law of average is, if forty people listen to that tape, you'd have all the customers or distributors they would need to earn a hundred pounds a month. Or maybe this. You might say, whoa, and all you'd have to do is every Tuesday night when we have our conference call, just have one new person on that conference call every Tuesday night for the next 10 weeks, and then you earn a 100 pounds a month. Or every Tuesday night opportunity meeting for the next uh, eight weeks, make sure you have one guest. These are ways of explaining what they would have to do to earn 100 pounds a month. So you may need so many customers, maybe so many wholesale buyers or uh, six or eight distributors just using the products for their personal use or maybe just sponsor one brand new distributor a month or maybe just pass out so many tapes or get so many people to the opportunity meeting you'd earn a hundred a month so there's lots of ways of explaining it so people would get it so in your business what would you have to do in your business to earn 100 pounds a month so let's take a quick 30 second think break and write down what we would have to do to earn 100 pounds a month